After replacing all the seals and gaskets on the pump, the pool pump motor ended up also needing its bearings replaced because water had gotten past the multiple seals and into the bearing. The motor is a Century Centurion B1000. It was impossible to find out what size bearings were used. None of the pool companies knew, and I also contacted the manufacturer who led me to the local service center who spent some time looking for documentation that had the bearing sizes and they could not find it either. They could find the same stuff that I could find online. Finally, the bearing seized and the pump motor stopped and we had to remove it and take it apart to determine the bearing dimensions. The front bearing is an NSK6304DU, which I replaced with a 6304-2RS, designed for a 20 millimeter shaft. The 2RS means two rubber shields. The rear bearing was an NTN6203LH, which I replaced with a 6203-2RS, designed for a 17 millimeter shaft. The motor must be completely removed and disconnected from the pump and power. The impeller has to be taken off the shaft. There's a rubber ring around the shaft that is supposed to sling water away from the shaft. Remove that. Then there's a metal washer pressed in. Use a screwdriver to remove that by prying through the housing drain hole under the shaft. Behind that you'll find another rubber ring. This is the last line of defense to keep the water out of the motor housing. Remove that too. Then there's a screw that holds a bearing that must be loosened. Mark the positions between the front, center, and back motor housings using a marker or tape to make sure that you can easily realign them when reassembling. There are four extremely long screws on the back of the motor that holds it all together. Carefully unscrew those. Some of them may need to be worked back and forth a little due to corrosion. The front of the motor housing was stuck to the bearing shaft, so I had to use the gear puller to remove it. The bearing was completely shot and damaged. The size was barely readable. It was marked NSK6304DU. I tried to use the gear puller to remove it, but even after applying an enormous amount of torque using a half inch extension ratchet, it still would not move. I thought something was going to break. Ultimately, I had to remove the outer bearing race and use a small abrasive cutoff wheel to cut a slit in the bearing to be able to open it and remove it from the shaft. That's when I saw that the bearing had slightly stir welded itself to the shaft, thus explaining why the puller could not remove it. Here the motor's already taken apart and we've replaced the bearings, both the front and the back bearing. Putting it back together is just the reverse of taking it apart. So if you see it being put back together, you can just reverse those steps to take it apart. So first I drop the core down in here. And I have to make sure that the bearing seats okay in the bottom. This top cover here has a, a little catch for the bearing, so make sure that that's um, screwed in place there and it'll stay open and then when you start to tighten it, it should rotate around and come to a stop and then capture the bearing. There are some washers down in here, little spacers, just leaving those in there, I lubricated them. And there are spacers on the other side too, there are like wave washers at the other end to take up any tolerance. Put a piece of plastic pipe over here. I'm going to lightly Okay, once the motor is back together, make sure that the shaft spins freely, there's no rubbing or anything. And um, I made some marks as to the location of the how the, the ends of the housings meet up with the main housing. I put some tape where the housing ends, 
and the main part of the housing meet on both the front and the back. So make sure that matches up and then you can pass the screws back through there that we're holding everything together. These long screws here. Put a little lubricant on these screws so you can take them apart easily in the future. There are two seals that go on the shaft that uh, their goal is to try to prevent water from reaching the inside of the motor if it leaks down the shaft. But in this case, it looks like uh, neither one of them worked. There was probably just so much water that went in. And so there's first there's one, then there's a washer that goes over here that is kind of pressed in there. And Hammer that in, and there's another w washer. There's another uh, seal that that goes on the outside that's supposed to sling water away from the shaft. So the purpose of both of these rubber washers is to sling any water that comes down the shaft away from the shaft. Uh, by just by the rotation of the motor and so it slings it away before it can get into the motor but in this case I guess there was so much water coming in that it just didn't work surprisingly the repair worked the motor sounded just like new and we saved over $700 great success <laughs>